Join us on our website at www.thegrandview.org and get more information about our show. There you can download our free book, Everything You Need to Know About Outdoor Painting. Yellowstone Falls and I've got to say that even before we started to come to Yellowstone Park I knew this was the place that we were going to paint. This is red rock and you actually have to hike down and the reason why I'm so excited about this place this is the actual place that Albert Bierstadt and Thomas Moran painted so I knew that it would make for a perfect composition. So without further ado let's go ahead and get started. Now this time I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to sketch the entire painting with blue. Again, this is just a sketch. Very quickly, we're gonna sketch this pretty fast. I wanna get painting pretty fast because I'm so excited about being up here that I'm gonna do this a little differently. Rather than sketch everything in detail, I'm going to just sketch the main masses. And then there's a row of pine trees and a little bit of a mountain. Now this area in here, it's all gonna be in shadow. It's gonna actually frame my painting. So I'm gonna very quickly, I'm gonna put a very quick wash of cobalt blue. With the burnt sienna, it will create a nice dark frame. And these trees are gonna grow off of this dark area. Now to the right, there's these wonderful Gothic spires that come up out of these wonderful angles. So let's put one of those in. It's a little obstructive from where I'm at, so I'm actually going to remove the tree that's in front and bring it out into my painting just all by itself. And we're ready to start painting. We're going to have just a little bit of sky showing through. This is just cobalt blue and white. Okay, now with my sky done, we're gonna start working on the next row of mountains. These mountains are fairly close, so that we don't have to worry about a real soft value. These trees are far away, and there's just a real soft edge. I'm gonna take exactly the same color, even with less white, and I'm going to put the next row of trees in. These trees should appear even darker than the ones that I just put in. So we create three rows of trees in a matter of seconds. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna bring a little bit of this detail along the ridge of my mountain, right against that sky, just to soften that edge even more. You want soft edges on the area of your painting that is not really the focal point, so that the viewer doesn't concentrate on it. And now with this base color, we're just gonna lay this all over the background rock, very quickly. And as we go down, there's a little bit of that light showing through. And then we're gonna bring it back up on these rocks here. Okay, now with this base color in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna manipulate it back and forth. In the shadow areas, I'm gonna add a little bit more blue and red to create a little purple. And in my highlight areas, I'm gonna to try to put it on a little purer. The canvas tone is actually going to enhance this color because it, in some areas, I'll leave it a little bit transparent, especially in the shadow area. I do want some of this brown tone to show. And just mixing these two colors back and forth. Now, there's a lot of shadow in this rock here that goes all the way up to the top of the rock. And so I'm gonna take this purplish color and I'm just gonna bring that right along my highlight color. Enjoy the fact that the light is changing because you're learning about this area. 
You're seeing things that all of a sudden just appear out of nowhere and then disappear while something else pops up. Okay, now I'm excited because I'm ready to start my water. Just begin by laying in the white. Now with a little bit of blue, I'm going to start laying in my shadow color. And I'm going to concentrate on this wonderful mist at this point. We don't even see the waterfall at the base. It just becomes this haze of wonderful, wonderful blue, misty color. And we're going to bring this mist right along the shadow side of my waterfall. I'm bringing in the shadow. I'm just going to mix that also into my falls. And I'm going to bring that into my base color of the rest of my falls. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow in with my white. And using the same stroke that I used with my shadow, by going across, I'm going to start bringing in the highlights of my water. There's a lot of wonderful spray. So I want to create a nice misty quality over on this side. There's a little green showing at the very ridge of my waterfall. So I'm going to switch to a smaller brush, add Viridian Green and White. And I'm just going to go right at the very edge of the waterfall and put that in. Okay, now with that dark color that I used for my river, also go ahead and bring it along the edge. What I'm going to do is lay in the base for my darks and then I'm going to bring the white back up to this. There's a definite ridge along the top of the waterfall that is very much the characteristics of these falls. I'm going to introduce a little bit of darks into my waterfall because there's definitely some dark areas. And I'm going to go back and forth, just working with my small brush. Notice these horizontal lines. By going horizontal, I can create that feeling of movement in my water. Beginning students oftentimes try to do waterfalls just to like bring the brush stroke flat. The water actually has a very horizontal feeling to it. It comes down in big clumps. Now I'm going to lay the base color for my rocks. And notice I've gone over my sketch a little bit. I'm probably going to push these rocks a little bit more to the left. Don't be married to your sketch. Be always willing to change it ever so slightly. And now I'm going to go to the right and also lay this base color in. The sun hasn't hit down here yet, so it's all in shadow. And while it's in shadow, I'm going to paint it in shadow. I have to paint very quickly. And while I have this same tone on my brush, I'm going to introduce a little bit of Viridian Green to it. Again, Viridian Green is the same color that we used on top of the waterfall. And I'm going to paint in the base for my river. And now I'm going to add just a little bit of white and blue. I'm going to create the mist. And I'm just going to mix it into my base color. Now I'm just going to mix in my mist into this base color. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side too. Once I get the blue mist in, I'm going to very carefully just work the edge, creating a darker value as it comes closer. These mountains will get the feeling that they are coming closer just by putting a little less white into these colors and mixing it into my base color. See, so that base color becomes a very important part. And now let's start working on the main spire here. And I'm taking the mother color, and I didn't even switch brushes here. I've got the same brush that I used for my green. And I've got a little bit of green in my, in my color, and that's okay, that's okay. These rocks have all kinds of color in them. And just bring this all the way down into the canyon. Introduce a little bit more red and yellow down here. There's a little more uh, iron in the, the ground down here, so it has a little bit more of a brown, rusty color. And now with all my metal area more or less in, I can't wait to get to the foreground. So I'm going to mix my alizarin crimson, my cobalt blue. I'm going to make my background color into my foreground color just by adding some shadow. Just by bringing some dark in the foreground, 
creates the illusion that the background becomes the foreground. And now with my foreground darks and I'm going to start working on my trees. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush and I'm going to add lots of turpentine and I'm going to use the same two colors and I'm going to lay in the trunks for my trees. So at the base of it, we do need to have a little bit more detail. But up here, we can just kind of be loose. There's some little twigs and sticks sticking off that from trees that didn't quite make it. OK, now since we finished our left-hand side of our painting, I want to go to the right-hand side and finish that. I'm going to paint this fairly flat. This is going to be my mother color for this particular rock formation here. And I'm going to mix in a darker color and lay in the shadow. You can see very quickly you can recreate these things without going into a lot of detail. Okay, now I'm going to pull a little bit of this color from this rock formation and I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to lay in the shadow for this formation. So I'm borrowing a little from this rock to paint that rock. Also, there's a, some little tiny trees in the background. So what we want to do is we want to very lightly just hit the fan brush onto this wet paint and create little tiny trees on the background mountains. Just with the hit of the fan brush, Okay, now with my trees done, I need to put a little bit of detail onto my rocks. I'm going to switch to my flat bristle brush. I'm going to mix a cool color because most of these rocks are in shadow. And I'm just very quickly going to add a reflected light on these rocks. Now notice the blue. Now in close-up, this seems very, very bright. but in contrast to the rest of the painting, this is cool and it's actually dark. Okay, now I want to put in a few little bushes so this can just give the illusion of bushes and, and shrubs. Now with that done, we're ready to sign the painting. So I'm going to switch to my small signature brush. And we're going to conclude this wonderful day at Yellowstone. Join us on our website, thegrandview.org, and get more information about our show. There you can download our free book, Everything You Need to Know About Outdoor Painting, along with a free diagram of today's subject. Paintingfromnature.com a website for artists seeking inspiration, advice, and knowledge to master painting from nature. Paintingfromnature.com